Hi. Today we're going to be talking about strategies for fault tolerant APIs. And specifically, we're going to be discussing what we call our fallback API invocation strategy. So essentially, this is almost exactly what it sounds like. We're going to have a fallback API that we're going to invocate when we have any, uh, some kind of a failure with a, primary, uh, with a primary API. So the key goal behind this is to really go and provide an alternate endpoint so that we can go and still return back a success message to our client without the client even knowing. So if we want to talk about our goals, it's going to be to provide an alternate endpoint that can return a success message when the primary fails. So, what does that look like in practice? So essentially what we're gonna need in this one is we're gonna have three different aspects. So we're going to have one, which is going to be our client. This is who's gonna be calling our API. And we're going to have in between the client and the actual API implementation is where we're actually going to have a fault tolerant API. So this is the API that's actually going to to invocate the the fault or the fallback API uh, policy. And then finally, we're going to have. Our primary API, so this is going to be the one that we're going to call uh, most of the time. So this is the one that has the, the true functionality. But as we say here, we've got a fallback API as well. So we're going to have a secondary API that we're going to call in case that primary one fails. Okay. So we start off with our client going and calling our API, which is going to pass through the fault tolerant API. The fault tolerant API is going to pass this over to the primary API. So this is the first time we're going to call this. That primary API is going to actually return back a failure message. And this fault tolerant API is going to say, well, let's try, let's retry this one more time. We've got a retry process. We're going to retry it one more time. So we're going to call over here a second time. And lo and behold, we're still going to receive a failure message back. Now, the retry strategy over here says, okay, we're only going to retry that two times. And after the second time, we're going to go and go to our fallback API. So we're gonna come down here to our fallback API for a third call. And luckily this fallback API is actually going to be working. So we're gonna go and return back a success message to the fault tolerant API, which will then pass the message back to the client. So the way that this looks now is the client made one call to, the, to our API and the fault tolerant API took care of the pattern of handling these errors and then going and calling the fallback API, receiving the message back, and to the client, it looks like they got a completely successful message. Now, you might be asking yourself, what makes a good fallback API? So the first thing that we can, t we can think about with a fallback API is some kind of a depreciated API. So this might be an API that um, we added some performance enhancements or some small tweaks that didn't necessarily change the data that was coming out of it, but we maybe made it better um, in other respects. So in this case, we could, we'll just consider this a depreciated API. 
another thing that we could think about is if you have a disaster recovery site. So this would be, you know, a, an alternate location where you have an exact replica of this primary API. So this would be most ideal, but most of the time we don't always have that. Um, so if you do have that, we would have, we would talk about a DR replica of the API. These are all examples. The third one would be, say for instance, we were to have an API that does everything that our primary API does, but it returns back even more. And we're able to maybe filter off some of the extra results that we get back. We could consider this a superset API. And then the last piece that maybe isn't going to be the most ideal, but is better than no response at all, would be an API that has less functionality than the first one. Maybe it has some of the fields, but not all of the fields. So the idea here would be we'd be calling a lesser capable API, or maybe we could consider that a subset API. So, in summary, our fallback API invocation strategy will basically allow us to provide an alternate endpoint in case our primary endpoint fails. We can go and call a fallback API. And some examples of those could be depreciated APIs, replicas at a DR site, or a superset or a subset of an API. And with that, we have our fault tolerance strategy for fallback invocation. And thank you and have a great day.